Hey everyone, so I'm Ryan and I'm gonna talk about the slow loris attack. So today it's gonna to be short and simple. The target audience here are beginners, but not absolute beginners, beginners who understand what the Metasploit console framework is, um, beginners that have some introductory level of cybersecurity, right? But nothing we do here is gonna to be too technically challenged, right? We're not gonna be piping commands or doing any crazy bash scripts, right? So it should be pretty accessible here. But what are some of the prereqs? Maybe what are some of the, the things that may be gated here? Um, the first thing is going to be, in order to follow with this technical demo, I'm using the Metasploitable 2 VM, right? So if you don't have it downloaded, you need to get that downloaded. And if you want, feel free to leave in the comments a video. I, I can make a video on how to do that. If not, totally fine, won't do it either. Second, we need an understanding of the MSF console. Right, And when I say an understanding, I'm going to walk us through all the steps. I just need you to know it's a thing that exists and how the, the general high level idea of what its purpose is. Right, It's this hacking framework that's meant to automate attacks. Right, I just need you to understand that. But I'm going to show you all the different commands we need to do. Lastly, um, enthusiasm to learn more about cybersecurity. And now, hey, you caught me. This is not a requirement, but it is a recommendation. So keep that in mind. So agenda, we're gonna talk about what the slow loris attack is, right? what it even is. We're gonna talk a little bit about the animal, the slow loris. Um, we're gonna talk about how to perform it using MSF console, except we're not gonna talk about it via slides. Uh, we're gonna jump for some hands-on keyboard work here. And lastly, we're gonna talk about how to prevent and mitigate this attack, right? There's no reason for me to make this tutorial if not for the purposes of helping us fix these issues, right? I don't wanna just cause issues, I wanna, I only want to fix these issues, right? We're learning so that we can prevent these attacks and understand them. What is a slow loris attack? It's an attack in which an attacker sends pieces of HTTP requests one at a time, right? It's gonna be very slow. So we're sending one request, right? Or a couple requests, one at, like piece by piece, right? With the hopes of overwhelming a web server, right? So all we're trying to do Right, is make use of the fact that, um, that we can abuse the available HTTP connections permitted by a server um, by basically taking advantage of the fact that if we're very slow with our request, that we could quickly fill up their queue system. Right, so a malicious user basically can open many connections um, by initiating these HTTP requests, but not closing them, right, and sending them over slowly. That's what we're going to be doing here. So keyword here, slow, right? The technique, um, what we're seeking to do is to consume server resources, restrict access using very little bandwidth, right? And this DOS attack, denial of service attack, is different from other DOS or DDoS attacks um, because what we're doing is we're actually not going to be uh, completing our three-way handshake similar to how those other DOS attacks would. Um, I just threw a couple terms out there. Just want to make sure we understand them. A DOS attack is a denial of service attack. Um, the best way to think about it, and this is where we're going to jump over actually to Scala draw, right? Because that should help us. The best way to think about a DOS attack, let me just type up here, DOS, just so we know, is think about a cashier at Target, right? Or any store, right? I don't have to make it brand specific. Um, if they are flooded with requests, they are flooded with people trying to use the cashier, right? Let's say this is us, we're the circle here. Uh, we may not be able to check out, right? Let's say there's so many requests that we never get to the front of the line. We never get to see the cashier. This is a denial of service attack, right? We will not be served because there are so many flooding requests that that cashier is at maximum capacity, right? Cannot serve anymore. Web servers are very similar to cashiers. Um, if a web server has too many requests going to it, trying to connect to it, right? Too many requests. Um, it will prevent other users from being able to access that resource, access that web page, right? This is called an, an attack on availability, right? If any of you have heard of the CIA triad, I know, scary acronym, ooh, right? Uh, CIA just stands for confidentiality, integrity, availability, right? Don't worry about any other letter right now except for availability, meaning if we can or cannot access the server, right? So the DOS attack tries to play off the fact that if we send a ton of requests, that we can overwhelm a web server, right? And we can make it so that the good users, right, the ones who actually want to use the site may never be able to access it. Slow Loris is a little bit different, right? Instead of trying to overwhelm with volume, 
we're going to overwhelm by having it really slow. So like, let's say we only have two requests being sent out, right? So picture, once again, the cashier example, let's say there's only two people in front of you, but when they go up, right, they're talking to the cashier and they're like, uh, right, and they're kind of just droning on. Maybe they have a million items in their cart. Maybe they decided to talk about their entire life story, right? We all know these people. <laughs> so let's say that happens, right? You may only have two people in front of you, but it may take you just as long as if you had 20, right? As if you had 10. So this Lalores attack is playing off the fact that instead of overwhelming a web server with the amount of requests, we're gonna overwhelm it with the time it takes to complete each request, right? So if a web server is not configured to close out a request after a certain amount of time, we can abuse that, right? And once again, this is us the circle because we are not a square, right? This is us the circle. We may never get service to this cashier Right. Once again, the metaphor is to this web server um, if this issue is not resolved. So once again, web servers are just like cashiers. If you have a couple people taking an hour each, right, the real non-malicious users may never be able to talk to them. Let's jump to Metasploit console. Right? I told you this should be succinct, this whole talk. So uh, first thing you'll notice when I click on that, uh, I move the location of where my terminal is. So that was silly. I need to fix that one day. But that is not going to happen today, because today we're demoing. I'm going to do Control Shift plus plus plus, right? Plus 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 plus, just to make this big so you all can see it. I know it's going to be pretty small, so I want to compensate for that. So let's start it up. How do we start up MSF console? Quite simply, by typing it in. We're going to hit Enter. We're going to see some cool graphics, right? Some people they spend a lot of time programming this, so let's appreciate it. Um, and then finally, once we see this on our command line, we are now in the console. I'm going to clear just to bring myself all the way to the top. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to type in search slow loris, right? So I'm going to search for the module because MSF console actually has a built-in module for the slow loris attack. So I'm going to search for that and find out where it is. So search slow loris. I find out that this is the path of my attack. So you can either copy and paste it. I'm going to type it out because I want this tutorial to be paste at a you know, pace that we can follow. All you need to do to use this module is to type in use auxiliary DOS for denial of service. Um, I hit tab, so it asked me if I want to see all 113 possibilities. I don't. HTTP. And then lastly, so Loris. When I hit enter, something cool is going to happen. Right, we see this, I'm in red. All I did was type clear, by the way, to get this all the way back up. We see I, I now have red text, which means we're in hacker mode, ooh, or pen testing mode. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in show options, right? Options, when I type in show options, I'm basically asking, well, what do I need to configure? And I'm gonna look through all of these settings and see what I need and what I don't need. So first thing, delay. Seems like there's a default setting. Required is yes. Second, ran user agent, true. Yes, right, so I'm just going to keep the defaults. Port 80, right, I'm going to attack on port 80, which is just the web server port. Yes, sockets, right, we don't need to, to know too much about this. The default should work fine for this demo, so don't worry too much here. All I need to configure is the R host. R host, I like to think of it as being the receiving host, the victim. So I'm going to do set R host, and I'm going to use my target machine. In this case, it's going to be 172, 16, 224.5. For you all, it will be different. It will depend on plus 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 plus. It will depend on when your MS or where your um excuse me, your metasploitable 2 VM lies, what its IP address is. Right. So for me, just to show you, sorry, spoiler, showed you the animal. Um, this is my metasploit, metasploitable 2 VM. This is its IP address, right? So this is a, a web server, right? Currently on its web server. So set our host to the IP of your Metasploitable 2 VM. Um, if you do not know what that is, you could actually go to the VM itself. Ooh, go to the VM itself and type IP space A. And you should see, I can't highlight it because for whatever reason, when they made this VM, they decided, hey, let's take out cool features like your ability to use a mouse. Um, but you can see my IP address here is 172.16.224.5, right? So 
let's go back to da 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 da. Metasploitable. Set our host IP address of Metasploitable two. Enter. Cool. Now, if I do show options, I should see that that is now set up to be this IP. So let me show you before I launch this attack, because we only have one more command to type, right? Super simple. Um, this is what a working website looks like. I'm able to navigate tabs, right? I could even back out a little bit, right? I could back out to the main page and navigate this, right? This is working. This is the website serving me. Let's overwhelm it with the slow lures attack. I'm just going to type in the magic word, exploit, and my attack has launched. Now, it might take a couple seconds for this like really to kick in because what's happening is there's a web server that's working and we're slowly overwhelming it with requests that take forever to close out, right? Mm -hmm. So let's jump back in. Let's try it and try it until it stops working. And wow, it stopped working immediately. Um, I'm clicking on brute force right now and it's just hanging up up here. Let me try to back out. As we can see, it's still not loading. If we were to wait 10 minutes, an hour, I would still not load, right? It's, it's gonna take a bit. Um, so for as long as I run this attack, because this attack is continuous until I hit control C to kill it, for as long as I run this attack, I will not be able to use this web server, right? I am not able to use it right now. I'll even open a different tab, right? And look, it's just hanging up, and it's not working. So now what I like to do is I'm gonna show you side by side what's gonna happen as soon as I hit control C. All right, are we ready? I'm going to stop the attack. Control C. As, and almost immediately, as soon as I stop the attack, the web server is now back up and running. Right? So that slow lowest attack is now done. So that's how you perform it. Which brings us to the last step. We talked about what it is. We talked about how to perform it. Let's talk about how to prevent it. Right? This is the most important part of this lecture. Right? Because you all may be in a situation in which you have to configure a server and make sure it's not susceptible to this attack. How do we mitigate it? The two things I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about a couple, but the two on the slide. First, if, if you're using an Apache server, you could use the uh, mod underscore request timeout module. Um, this will make it so that any request that's taking too long will be killed. Right? If you do not have that timeout, you will allow requests that take hours to maybe infinite amounts of time to just sit there on your server and to take up bandwidth, right? Which is bad. The other thing is load balancers. The more load balancers you have, the harder it is to impact your availability. What a load balancer is, is think about instead of having one cashier, what if you had 30 cashiers? So even if somebody had a slow loris attack, right? They'd maybe only bog down a couple of the cashiers, right? Hopefully that's the point of the load balancer. And um, then we said IP tables, I put it italicized because if you know what the malicious IP addresses are, Right, you can make it so that they're blocked. Right, they can't communicate with your server. Um, so that is another one. Um, outside of these, right, other things we could do, um, we could limit the header and message body um, to a very minimal and or minimal and reasonable length. Um, we could set tighter URL limits, right, to make sure that only appropriate uh, message bodies are sent. Right, nothing that's too long, nothing that's purposely malicious. Um, and then also we could define a minimum incoming data rate, right? So we'll drop connections that are slower than that rate. So I'm sorry if you are in the middle of, you know, you're in middle America and maybe you have a terrible satellite connection, right? You know, this web browser might end up dropping your connection thinking it's a slow loris attack, right? But that's another protection here. Um, so those are the mitigation, right? The ones, right, with mod request timeout, that one's specific to Apache. I know there are some for and GenX and Python servers, right? For pretty much any type of web server you can spin up, there will be some sort of mitigation. It's all up to you to understand that you need to look up those modules and make sure they're enacted or else you may be susceptible. So that's all for the slow loris attack. Time for some bonus DLC on this talk. Huh? It's not that, it is this. This is what the attack was named after, right? It's the point of talking about slow loris attack. We can't talk about the animal. Um, so look at that. Very scary. Ooh. Um, for those who have not realized yet, if you're looking for only the useful content in the video, that is done. Uh, now it is time just to admire animals. This is a cool little uh, graphic rendering, right? So look, even cybersecurity people have a, a sense of humor, right? Naming this attack after slow lores. Um, so that's all I have for you all today. Tune in next time. If you liked it, let me know. Uh, I'm always more encouraged when I see like, oh man, like 
people watch it and people enjoy these. So uh, let me know if there's something you want me to cover. Like, let's say you want me to go a little bit further back and talk about how to download the Metasploitable 2 VM. Always open to that. But that is all I have for you today. Uh, have a good night. Unless it's morning for you, then have a good morning. Unless it's lunch for you, have a great lunch. Good night.